In your view, why was the creation of a specific work package for biomedical devices in the Graphene flagship necessary? Um, there were two reasons for that. First reason was the fact that the whole biomedical uh, field started adopting the material globally. So the flagship had to somehow react to this trend um, and try to adopt also a direction of research that will focus at particular biomedical applications. And the second reason was the fact that the uh, flagship is supposed to um, provide benefit to the European citizens and obviously biomedical applications uh, will be hopefully one uh, type of application that uh, it will really directly benefit uh, society. So the sociological implications and sociological responsibility that uh, we felt we all had in the field led to this decision. What kind of applications are being worked on with graphene in the biomedical field? And what are the future possibilities that might be in store? Most of these devices that we are developing within the flagship project are uh, what we call uh, neural interface devices. These are substrates uh, of uh, graphene containing substrates that will directly interface with different parts of the neurological system whether it's the central nervous system such as the brain or the spinal cord um, or the peripheral nervous system so uh, uh, nerves that you have in your um, hands or your legs or other parts of the body which are involved in controlling the function of particular tissues. Um, all of these devices uh, that we're developing are aiming at uh, three different um, outcomes. The first is to record the activity of the nervous system. The second is to provide what we call stimulation of the nervous system, so be able to pass current, electrical current, into the nervous system, therefore start um, manipulating it. And the third function is to be able to deliver at the same time at the local level where this implant is uh, placed in the body of the patient uh, with some therapeutic molecules. So at the local level, not at the systemic level, therefore reduce the risk of any side effect. There's not one type of graphene, so in these devices we are trying to incorporate multiple types of graphene or other two-dimensional materials. So there are some types of graphene that are better suited for recording, there are some other types of graphene that are better suited for uh, stimulating, so putting current, electrical current into the nervous system, and there are some third types of graphene that will be uh, even better for um, delivering therapeutic agents. So <coughs> this is a common misunderstanding that the world has actually and actually the scientific community and a lot of my colleagues are not helping in this dialogue calling graphene as if there's only one type of material. In fact we have dozens of different types of materials and each of these materials will have a completely different profile and will be better suited for a different function. So the groups here at ICN2 but also at Seber um, and Thesic um, within the Bellaterra campus are extremely important to the uh, flagship. I mean these are the uh, main groups that are fabricating, engineering and testing the prototypical devices. Um, most of the other partners in the flagship project uh, within our biomedical technologies work package are users of the technology, so they're either biological labs or um, uh, clinical uh, hospitals. And what we're trying to do, to do here with those guys is always to have a constant communication and link um, with the groups in uh, Bella Terra with the users of the facility. So in a way, this is where the devices are being built. 
the devices are used and uh, studied and tested in terms of function and capabilities in the rest of the network. How is it to be a, the public face of the Biomedical Devices Working Group? It's challenging. I mean, being the face of a, of a um, community that is uh, really uh, at the eye of, the, of attention is something that is not easy. I mean, y the most difficult thing for me is to make sure that you maintain the excitement that exists in the field, but without promising um, uh, things that are not realistic or that they won't happen. So a balance between reality and uh, uh, what I call measured expectations is essential in this. And I'm trying very hard to communicate this. Uh, uh, of course, some of our colleagues, uh, not within the flagship but around the world, um, uh, have a different approach to this, you know, trying to or actually believe that the material can deliver more than what we think can deliver. So I think a measured approach is, but maintaining excitement, of course, because there is a lot of excitement in what you can do with these materials, is the strategy that I personally try to follow, but it's not easy a lot of times. How about the relationships between physicists and biomedical researchers? Is it easy to coordinate a multidisciplinary team trying to join both worlds? Yeah, we, we have this conversation within uh, the National Graphene Institute in Manchester because it's dominated by the physicists, the Nobel Prize winners. And, you know, and we come along with some biological things. A lot of our colleagues think that uh, the uh, biology is uh, decades behind where physics are in terms of progress, uh, progressive ideas and uh, cutting-edge research, etc. It may be true. Uh, the, the bottom line is that you definitely need to bring the two fields together and that you need to communicate with the two um, communities in a manner which both understand and appreciate what is it you're doing and, of course, that they try to support and, and contribute to it. So yeah, the philosophy in, in whatever we do is what I call we have a translation uh, and interpretation facility. So we talk to physicists in the language they understand and we talk to clinicians and, and the medical um, users of these technologies in their own language. And that's the only way in which you can um, achieve this kind of uh, merge. Again, it's not easy. Uh, it's done in other fields like, uh, for example, medical imaging is a field that had physicists traditionally embedded within hospitals. So there, it, it can be done, it is done. It's a matter of uh, being persistent and, and working with the two communities and bringing them closer and closer together. There's no other way. It's my uh, approach, in my opinion, is that uh, you can only achieve that if you have both communities working together.